Tonight is the 25th of uh, October and I'm sitting here in my sweet home C Club in Berlin together with a legendary guitar player from a legendary band. After the show, nice to meet you, Tony. Yeah, nice to meet you. It's a pleasure that you take time after the show. Um, it was the first show of a tour. How do you like it? Um, quite a lot of things went wrong. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, it's, it's great to get one under your belt, of course. But uh, there's so many things went wrong with the guitar. I was like... So, um, it, I, it's, there's a noise in the, the, the place coming through my amplifier and I had to use a, a thing that suppressed the noise, which changed the sound of the guitar. I know this is all boring, but I mean, that's what it was. So, but it drove me crazy. But uh, well, I mean, we finally got through with it. Yeah. I saw your keyboard player got also some problems with an earring or something like that. And uh, he looks a little bit um, angry about it. Oh, really? Yes. Well, I say, I don't know. <laughs> I, I was too busy worrying about my stuff, you know, going like, wow, what the hell, money work. But, uh... hey, you also look really concentrated, and, but uh, what I saw that you stand the whole of the concert, or most of the concert, in the background. Why? Uh, well, because, I guess. I mean, Bob's the front guy, and yeah. I mean, you don't have too many people like trying to push to the front, I don't think. I don't need to do that, really. I mean, it's not. It's not my personality, I guess. So. Okay. Mm. So you're quite still on a, on a stage? I do. You're, you're quite still and uh, yeah. lots of activity on the stage? Yeah, I'm, um, I truly... I mean, when it's all going well, I really enjoy myself and um, I really concentrate on what I'm doing. And, you know, when people are running around and diving all over the place, uh, I, I don't know how they can play the guitar, I'll probably do that, but... Um, Obviously, some people can, but um, it's not. I, I'm just interested in trying to play the right notes, basically. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, but you stay also far away from your monitor. Do you know? Do you don't need it? From the way, sorry. Your monitors. Oh, you know, tonight was different because, it, like I say, there were so many things going wrong, and um, this thing, this pedal that was on the guitar to stop this noise coming through my amplifier. Oh. Uh, was uh, it's like really cutting the change the sound of the guitar, the volume of the guitar, and it would cut the guitar out at times. If you if you were, try to play quietly, you just cut it out. It's oh. like it's called a no, noise gate, and oh. it was like shutting it down. I'm like, oh, you know, okay. So, but it's good that it happened on the first date, not uh, yeah. so you can talk about in a band and a crew and say, hey guys, that is wrong, that is not yeah. okay. Please ne next stage better. That's that's absolutely right. Yeah, um, that's the one consolation you have. Um, I was just saying they can only get better. <laughs> But I mean, as as a gig, the audience were great and the, the place is great. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wish we could have uh, really put our whole thing. You know, some of the songs were good. I thought. Um, We played some of them good. I mean, like everyone else played all right. It was just me having the problems. To, so, but it, I, it makes you want to, if you've got any hair, you rip it out. No. <laughs> yeah, Bob got a lot of fun on the stage. Your drummer got a lot of fun. Your bass player was a little bit, hmm, sometimes funny, sometimes strong. And sometimes you look so much often to the um, drum player, yeah. how he played. Is it important for you to look to your drum player, how he plays? Yeah, it is really. Um, especially bass, obviously. Um, it was it was also a bit difficult to see what Harry's doing because our lighting guy got some light shining right in our eyes like this, you know. <laughs> I mean, we, we, all these sort of things, like you said, uh, we need to sort it out properly. I mean, we've been rehearsing for about 10 days, I think it was. Okay. But stacks of things went wrong in rehearsals and we're going, oh, well, I hope this don't happen, you know, when we play live and that. Oh. And it took up a lot of the rehearsal time uh, when we were doing it. And so we didn't actually play a lot. Um, so I guess really I should uh, thank my lucky stars that we, we did as well as yeah. we did really. <laughs> how, uh, how important is a light show for your show? Sorry? How important is a light show for your show? Uh, it's very important. Um, we've had the same guy now for like about 30 years or something. Um, Maybe not Percy, but a long time. And I, 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 got, I went to his house and said, this is what I want 
you to tr- attempt to do blah 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 and he'll tell me yeah I can do that and I could do this and he'll, he'll improve it and yeah. it's very important uh, for us to, um, he brings a lot of his lights uh, special mm. lights uh, with him um, which we always take on the road with us yeah. he's real good you know and he, he listens to well, I've got some ideas of how I think the, the music should be interpreted okay uh, lights wise and uh, he, he always listens and tries to do what, what I'm you know hoping that he can do yeah. okay but um, how would you describe your own show I mean do you think about uh, that you stand in your cr- in the crowd and see your own show how would you describe it for fans who didn't see Magnum before yeah I'm um, I would love to walk into a, a room and see us playing I mean obviously that can never happen um, the nearest you can ever get to that is when you walk into a room and maybe one of the records are playing, you know, we, we, that's not very often. But um, uh, you, you've just got to... It's a gut feeling, you know. You, you try and do the... Try and interpret the music lights-wise and how, how we play. And so it all ends up being one unit, you know, sort of... Um, It's not a disjointed thing, in other words. Um, and there are lots of different sort of colours in the music. Um, I mean, uh, we're, we're at, I mean, you, we were watching someone, I think it was Genesis. Um, I mean, like, their rig would cost them £10 million, pounds, you know, <laughs> which is, uh, that's some rig, you know. Yeah. And, uh, it's very important, lights. So you, so you would say your show is a typical hard rock show without special effects, just listen to the music, enjoy the show, what the members give to you? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, um, it's, if, if, we're, if we're on the ball, um, it, it's real good. I mean, again, like everyone said, wow, it was, it's good for a first show, you know. I mean, It's a shame there has to be a first show. Um, it usually takes, I would think, three shows, and suddenly you're on your money. And then we have a day off, and we go, oh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so in, in my, my music. Please let me play. Please let me play. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can do a street gig on a street. Oh, what? sorry. A street gig. You just play on a street acoustic. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think so, so man. Why not? Well, I mean, how how would you do that? Take an acoustic guitar? Acoustic. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's just... Uh, I think we have enough um, problems trying to sort out playing on the stage, <laughs> let alone in the, in the street, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, let's come a, bit, a little bit back to your history as a musician, as a, yeah, a boy, as a child. Could you remember how does it start in your life to listen to music, to metal and rock? Um, my, my father was a, listened, he, he never played an instrument, um, but he bought records by John Mayle and people like that. And, I mean, I, I think I was probably listening to a guy called Cliff Richard, probably, Cliff Richard in the Shadows or something like that. And my father went, listen to this, this is much better music, you know. And, Played me, uh, gave me some John Mayle records to listen to, and I was just learning the guitar, and um, it's sort of really, oh, wow, I mean, this is great, man. and um, I think that's what sort of made me realise. Um, How old you were? Um, I don't really remember. What? Huh? Um. Is that you, Bob? Someone's knocking on the door, we don't know. Yeah, come in. What? Huh? We're trying to do an interview. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Pillock. I, uh... I've forgotten what you said now. <laughs> what was the question? Uh, the question was, uh, in which year does it, uh, was it beginning for you to listen to music, to rock and metal and learn a guitar? Uh, I, I guess I was about 
14. Okay, something like that. I think I had a guitar much earlier. I had a guitar for Christmas. And uh, I, I, a Spanish guitar, you know. And um, I had it dang, 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 made a few noises with it and then just left it against the wall and never even looked at it again. Um, I can remember my mother saying, um, oh, I'm going to sell the guitar, you know. And I went, mm, wait a minute, don't sell it, don't sell it. Mm. And I... I I started to play then. I bought, first thing I ever played on it was Riders in the Sky, a record by the Ramrods, and this is like a million years ago. So that was the first thing that got me, wow, this is great. It was a bit like a Dwayne Eddy thing, because yeah. uh, then there was Dwayne Eddy, of course, uh, Rebel Rouser and all that sort of stuff. So you, do you learn it yourself? Uh, do you take lessons? I actually did take a few lessons, uh, but it was um, it was sort of not flamenco, like um, fingerstyle um, guitar. And it wasn't. It's not what I wanted to do. It was uh, classical sort of stuff, and I, I just lost interest. That was when I like put the guitar and mm. got bored with it. I wanted to play like rock and roll, yeah. pretty much, and um, and that's then that's when I heard that record and I copied it and like then I actually stopped going out at night and I was staying in in my bedroom and learning to play the guitar cool. so that's how it happened cool. and could you remember your first band you ever played in yeah yeah I still see I still see the whole band every Christmas when I go go back to England uh -huh. um, what was the name of it but it, it was the called name? The Boulevards oh um It was a good band. Um, you know, I mean, we were, I guess we were 17 years old, something like that. We actually came to Germany. Uh -huh. This is like in 1962 or 63. We actually came to Germany. And there used to be um, places like the Star Palace and places like that. Well, in Hamburg, where the Beatles played. Oh, yeah? yes. Yeah. And then the, we played in Kiel. Um, Dortmund and various places uh -huh. but I mean we played six or eight hours a night and um, the band was really tight obviously for playing that long when we got back to England everybody went wow that's real good because I mean we played so much yeah. but uh, yeah, it, was, it was great, great own songs or cover songs yeah own songs or cover songs S -s -s oh no or it was all cover songs okay yeah it's just, uh, but it was like Stuff really that we actually played a couple of John Mayall things, so that was uh, they didn't go down very well with the promoter, <laughs> but uh, yes. they, they were still wanting to. Um, I think it was still Beatles and sort of stuff like that they wanted, you know. But it was just a, it was an experience for us, like 17 years old and uh, you know coming to Germany and uh, it, was, it was just amazing. And like I've been coming here ever since. So that's like. God knows how long, I don't know. And could you remember your first concert you ever played? Do you remember which club and where was it? What was it feeling, for a feeling to be on stage? Scared. <laughs> um, I think I do remember. It was like a, 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 a sort of a community hall mm -hmm. in sort of in Birmingham, a place called Gleep Farm, something or other. Um... Yeah, and we just played, because we thought we were the best thing going. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was real scary the first time we played. But, uh, it was great. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I still I still can remember the place. And um, I don't think we... There weren't that many people there. But, um, you know, it didn't matter. Just play. Yeah. And um, how developed your interest to be on stage? Uh, I mean, the first time you've been scared, what about now? Um, no, no, I'm, you mean, am I nervous now? Um, not really, no, um, I'm, I'm always excited before we go on stage. Um, I, I mean, I think I went through periods of, of, uh, my career, if you want to call it that, of not practicing enough and drinking a lot 
and um, sort of going on stage and just leaving it to not having rehearsed things and being really spontaneous, thinking, you know, this is great, but probably drunk. Ooh. And, um, I mean, I quit drinking about know, six odd years ago and uh, I suddenly realised, wow, I can play much better without booze, you know. And uh, I really look forward to, to playing. I, I enjoy playing now more than I ever did. OK. Um, and I really, I, I really enjoy it so much, you know. Mm. It's the best thing for me, you know. Okay. Do you start um, with your first band? Do you have a manager or do you have a booker or something? Or do you organize everything yourself? No. No, no. Oh, uh, the, first, the, the first band, yes. Uh, we had a friend who was our manager. We okay. called him our manager. He was just a mate. And um, we used to do quite a... Well, we worked... I suppose the band lasted about two or three years at the most I think then I went to live in London and joined this other band and and everyone sort of split up and did their own things but uh, we yeah, well yeah he was, he was a, a friend and just got us bookings you know he contacted agents and said would you book the boulevards and all that sort of stuff I mean this is very strange this because I'm going to see every one of these people that I'm talking about that was in the band and the manager will be uh, at this get together that we have once a year and um, I mean they know that I come to Germany or obviously no one else is still playing in the band or anything you know there's but one you, guy just like singing but, but you meet all together at Christmas time yeah yeah and do you do you do, you do a show there or do you say no, no. just hey Nice to meet you. Yeah, it's just like, are you still alive? You know, it's that sort okay. of business. So, but it's, it's good to see, uh, you know, um, people that you first started off with like a million years ago. It's, it's more than 40 years ago. Oh. So, um, it's really quite strange. <laughs> but it's crazy that every, every year, every time, the same ritual to say yeah. hello. It's like a... That's what it is. It's a ritual, yeah. yeah it's like dinner for one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> every year the same... Procedure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the next um, next steps in your career then after the Boulevards? Um, well, like I said, I went to London. I uh, lived in this... Some, some geezer wanted to manage... They, they got me to join this band and this geezer was... He, I mean, lived in this massive um, manor house, like really huge, great manor house... And we lived in his garden. We'd got this sort of stable in his garden that they'd uh, converted into um, living quarters. And we just played all the time and smoked a lot of dope and never really did much um, playing. Oh. Again, it was just fooling around. And, but we're like, we were living this... A very strange thing. I can remember we'd been away and we'd come back and... A band had, there was a studio in this huge house yeah. and uh, a band came in to do some demos and it was Pink Floyd can you believe that I mean What? Pink Floyd yeah you know I was like I mean this was before they ever made a record yeah. and uh, I know that um, I've done this since um, I can't remember which one of them it was it had a marble and rolled it down the strings of his guitar I was like yeah And uh, I actually, I used that like a couple of years ago. I thought, well, I remember what that guy's saying. That one of them, I can't, I think it was Sid Barrett, rolled a oh. marble down these guitar to get this effect. And, uh, yeah, and I, I think, I mean, they would never, ever know. I mean, uh, that, uh, that, you know, it was us or anything. Well, it was me, in fact. So, uh, I mean, that they... We, we just said, hello, how are you doing, mate? You know, it was that sort of thing. And they, they were looking for a deal, you know, uh, which, of course, they got. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, quite an interesting little thing, you know. Together in one room with legendary Pink Floyd. It's yeah. amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Who would have thought, you know, they'd have gone to that, oh. that sort of statue? Yeah. And um, when came Magnum in your life? When did it happen? Um, I'm not... Oh, yeah, 1972, I think it was. That, 
That's Bob telling me, because I'm useless with dates. But um, they came to my house. The band was called Magnum already, and they were sucking the guitar player. And Kex, who was the drummer in Magnum at the time, came to my house. I'd known him for years, and he said, do you want a job? And it was like playing Top 40 stuff in a club. Um, and I, I said, yeah, well, I've just lost my job. Yeah, it'd be great. I just need to earn some dough, you know. So um, I think we got paid £30 a week, uh, if I remember. Like, that was playing six nights a week. And um, I, I, I joined there, and then I, I started to get really bored in the one place. And I said, anybody interested in playing some of the songs that I've written? You know, and uh, they went, yeah, yeah, OK. And, like, we got fed up with playing all the top 20 stuff. Oh. And, um, and uh, we, um, we started playing some of the stuff I'd written. And um, we got the sack. <laughs> so, uh, you know, they said, like, we don't want you anymore. You know, you're not playing the right sort of music. It's, it's just gone too heavy-ish. Uh-huh. And um, so we got the, the uh, bullet from there. But we carried on, obviously, being Magnum. And we did some backing... Tours uh, back in American artists. Mm. Um, again, it was purely financial. Um, although I did enjoy, like, backing Del Shannon. We backed Del Shannon, it was great. God rest this old. And um, that was like a, a good experience. It was hard work, but a good experience. So you, you practice in guitar, you join Magnum, and you re- uh, wrote songs. Um, yeah. What kind of songs? Where do you took the topics? Well, it was, I wouldn't, I mean, it was sort of, um, I wouldn't say complicated songs. It was trying to be different to, because we'd been playing pop songs and of course that drives you around the Swanee. Although I did learn a lot playing all these pop songs. Um, it, it, you learn quite a lot of, not tricks, but how things are put together, how songs are put together. And, but then I was kind of like, oh, no, I want to do something different and guitar playing a, a bigger part in the, the, the songs and things. And, like, the arrangements. Um, I mean, that, that, so I'd be probably listening, at that time, probably listening to Yes and uh, bands like that. But maybe Queen would just... You see, the club we worked at, um, we would have a break and go up the road to another club uh, called Barbarella's. And w- I'll tell you, I, I saw ACDC there before they got a record out. Queen. Um, what, who else? Like really big bands that were just starting, you know. And uh, we just got there and go... And I, I think it must have influenced me going like, well, I don't want to do this. I want to do that, you know. Yeah. So... It was, it was great to see, you know. And we ended up playing at that other club. Yeah. How much do you have to pay to see them? Do you remember? Well, we didn't, actually, because we used to say, I work from the rumour and they'd say, come in, you know. So it wasn't, it wasn't a lot of money. It'd be like a pound, one, one pound or something like that. Um, and today you have to pay... Oh, yeah, yeah. A hundred more. That's right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Crazy, crazy to... I mean, the stories are really great. Do you do you remember one? Do you meet them? Do you meet ACDC or something? Some of the guys? No, no. I, I, we actually. I think I said hello to um, one of them. I can't remember now. I mean, they're, they're like that. Really small yeah. guys. I mean, I'm little, and Bob's little. I'm not sure whether Bob was there. He might have been. I can't remember. But I remember just going, "Wow, that was great! What oh. a great show that was!" You know. I mean, you see Bond Squad live. Yes. Oh, man. man. Dynamite. I mean, the whole... I mean, that was like proper rock. I mean, you know, I mean... They they were just like they are now. I I don't think they've changed at all. I mean, they've obviously written new songs now. But that same vibe was was really, really strong. Um, And they've still got it, obviously, today. Very, very good. They were on with a band called... Backstreet Crawler. Backstreet Craw- Crawler were the top band. Mm-hmm. ACDC was supporting. And 
But I can remember going, wow, you know, you know I mean, when back straight crawler came on, I mean... I mean, they came from Australia. They have to travel a lot of uh, kilometers to come to Great Britain, right? I mean, uh, to play as a support, as a band, nobody knows. Yeah. From Australia in London. Yeah. Much expensive, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> so you saw new covers, we have to say, in this time. Yeah. Um, do you go to concerts right now to see newcomer bands? Do you have the time for that? Or do you say, I no? Really, I don't really have... I mean, especially nowadays, I'm permanently writing. Um, I'm not, I don't, everything I do doesn't work out, but... Um, do you know Ollie Hahn from SPV? You say, um, yeah, well, okay. I'm talking to Ollie Hahn this evening, uh, earlier this evening, and this is our first gig tonight, as you know, and Ollie said, so what are you doing after this? <laughs> I'm going, hang on a minute, we haven't played the first gig yet, you know. So what are you doing after this? I said, well, I know when I want the album to be re that I'm writing at the moment because I've started writing another album mm -hmm. and um, we were talking about the release of this album that hasn't even been recorded yet. So um, I forgot what I was talking about now. But I mean, it, it's like, it's, it's that thing about, oh yeah, um, I'm always, don't, don't have time to go out and see bands. Unless uh, I'm going to meet someone or something, you know. Mm. And, uh, I'm, I'm permanently listening to, uh, playing music and hoping to, you know, write another album. So, mm. I mean, I've got a lot of stuff ready. Not ready, but stuff that I'm going like, yeah, yeah, this sounds good, this sounds good. And um, so it's a good start for the uh, another album. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you couldn't recommend a band like maybe from London which is not so known here in Germany? Um, or could you? I can't think offhand. Um, I know one good band they played together with Sex and it was uh, Crimes of Passion. Do you know? Uh, no, I don't know. They played together. There was uh, the first band to ever send me a uh, demo CD from my radio station and um, Now they play together with Saxon on tour. They play together on last tour. It was really crazy oh, yeah. to see them and to talk to them and say, hey, yeah, you are the guy. Great and fantastic. Oh, right. um, some of the fans still waiting out for you uh, at the venue. Do you don't, uh, did, didn't you go out, out the, after the show to the people and say, hello, how do you like the show? Do you stay normally? Okay, today you do an interview, <laughs> but... Do you sometimes go out and say hello to the guys? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I never used to because I was probably doing something else. But, yeah, normally I, I go out and say uh, hello. And, or I don't go like... I, I go, I hope you enjoyed this show. That's what I say. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I like to meet people, yeah. Okay. Because the support bands do it every time because they have to sell the merchandise and everything like this and say, hey, we are this band... Um, do you know these guys we played tonight before? Do you know them? Or do no, you... I met them the first time. But, I mean, we... I can't remember whether... They sent the record oh. to us. Um, we have a lot of bands, you know, go, oh, yeah, we want to come on, support you and all that sort of thing. And um, I don't normally get involved in it, but uh, I'd, I'd seen a, uh, a YouTube thing of them, and they look good and... Uh, But, I mean, I, really the first time I've met them was tonight, you know. Yeah. I mean, they seem nice guys. Okay. If you do you think about, um, you're younger, but you have the known and everything you n known from the music business you learn over the years, but you're still younger. Would you create a new band right nowadays? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. I mean... You know a lot of uh, things in the music business. You yeah. know what goes on in the stages. You know goes on what on tour. You goes on uh, yeah. what goes on to produce an album. Everything. Yeah. If you think about to be younger, maybe twenty two, twenty five. Yeah. But you know all these things. You know right now. Would you create a new band? Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, no, I mean um, it's. Uh, I, Young bands, I think, these days, no. Mm -hmm. They're much 
better clued up than we ever were. We, we still make mistakes, big time mistakes. Um, we, they, younger bands seem to be more business minded, I think. Um, okay. I don't know whether they're, I don't know why it is, but um, all I ever wanted to do was play the guitar. That was it. I didn't care what happened. Oh, no. was that? The building's going to set on fire. I don't care. <laughs> it didn't matter to me. Oh, uh, they owe you X amount of thousands of pounds. I don't care. <laughs> Playing the guitar. So did it say they lost the passion to play? They play just for money? No, no, I don't, I don't say that at all. They just seem more clued up. Uh -huh. they're, they're more sensible, which is good. Okay. Um, I mean, we, we, we've signed contracts that you wouldn't believe, you know. Mm -hmm. And young bands, it seems that young bands will tag you to a lawyer and, and get... I mean, we never did. We just go, yes, yeah, sign it, you know, let's have another drink. Yeah, I want to play the guitar. Who cares? We don't care. Really? And... Um, it was a different time. I mean, today you have so many... Time, yeah. You have many, many more pla platforms to produce or to say... The albums to see the band but would you say we have a, too much bands in the world would you say okay in the year you started to do music uh, was it easier to come out and to have success I don't think so I don't think it ever has been um, I mean we were really lucky that we did some demos and I knew someone who knew Jeff Lynne of ELO mm. and he was with Jet Records which was Don Arden and all that lot and um, we sent a demo down to them and they went yeah yeah come in make an album we went what <laughs> I hadn't even got enough songs you know I mean um, but that's how it happened really simple as that and uh, when you when you tell the, the story of like I think people try for years, you know, to yeah. to get these record deals and things. And, and so many people are unsuccessful, obviously. But, I mean, it was just... I mean, they were very, um, very, um, I think, suck it and see uh, Jet Records, where they're like, yeah, come down, make the record, and if it's any good, we'll put it out. If it's not, you know, we'll throw it in the bin. It was a bit like that, I suppose. But, like, they put it out, and... It, It actually charted in um, in England, and everyone was going, "We don't believe it! What you know? Why is this record charted? It was so funny, and because nobody thought for a million years it would ever chart, but uh, it was only lower chart. But uh, it was uh, good fun." <laughs> <laughs> Tony, now we let's come to a bit or two to the end because it's really late. Yeah. You want to have a party with the guys? No, we'll be dinner. <laughs> Yeah, dinner too. Um, my last question is to you. It's not a, more. It's not a t the question. It's more like a topic. And um, I want to would like to know um, your all time favorite band. You can choose six members, oh, and they can be alive or dead. Oh, okay. Say the name and which band they came from. It could be rock, metal, hard rock, whatever you like. Yeah. That's very hard to drop that on me like that. I know. <laughs> um, what would I like to see you don't have to choose every six you can say four is enough it's up yeah to okay you. okay John Bonham on drums which band James Brown singing okay Stevie Wonder on keyboards um Singer, keyboard. Uh, um, body guy on guitar. Which band? Uh, Which band do you come from? Wait, it's just his own band, you know. I mean, he is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, he's an old black guy. Well, probably my age. No, he's, he's older than me. Uh, old black guy uh, plays guitar. Um, I reckon... Um, The guy had a deep purple on, on bass. Mm -hmm. What's his name? I can't remember his name. I don't know. Uh, can't, oh, I should know his name. 
Is that a band? That's a band. That's a band. Okay. So you know the drummer? Oh, yes. Yeah, John Bonham. Okay. Yeah. John Bonham. That'd be like a really heavy... Okay. Heavy drums. And singer too. Stevie Wonder. Yeah. James Brown. Can you imagine that? Yes. Doing that... Yeah. And like that really heavy drums. Be brilliant. Great band. What was... What would... Yeah, what the, what oh, name? What name? Dead. What name we would give them? Oh, I have no idea. I have no idea at all. <laughs> the first thing came to your mind. Say it. Uh, I already that. <laughs> okay, the name is Ella. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you spell that. No. Oh, what I don't know. Oh, I have no idea. Really, no idea. <laughs> Tony, then thanks again for the time. Okay. I hope you like the questions and um, the last words are for you. I enjoy the talk. I hope you do too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. Great. Short last words. Thank you very much. Cheers.